Hello and welcome to Talking Europe. I'm in Rome at a time of great tension between Italy and France. They are, of course, both traditional allies and founding members of the European Union, but they're now squabbling about one of the most contentious issues in Europe, which is migration. An incomprehensible and unacceptable attitude is how the French side described Italy's decision not to let a ship carrying migrants dock on the Italian coast. For her part, Italy's Prime Minister, Giorgia Maloney, who's just a few weeks into her tenure, described the French reaction as aggressive. It's an issue which is not, of, of course, not just bilateral between Rome and Paris, but also speaks to the broader question of sharing responsibilities among EU member states. Well, to give us her reading of this situation, I'm very pleased to welcome today a veteran of the Italian and European political scene, Emma Bonino. She's a former EU commissioner, a former MEP. She's also formerly a senator for Rome, and she was Italy's foreign minister in 2013 and 2014. Emma Bonino, thank you so much for being my guest. Thank you. Thank you. you said in a, a recent interview to Italian media that uh, when France makes these criticisms of Italy, France should look at what it is doing at Ventimiglia on the border between France and Italy. So you're basically saying it, it, France is a hypocrite? No, no. I'm basically saying that in, on this issue, all member states, one way or another, cannot pretend to have been, let's say, legal, human, uh, and etc. So now it's uh, the French, Italian, but uh, of course, uh, if you look around, take Poland, for instance, Orban, for instance, even uh, 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 Austria, hmm, that closed uh, at the point was threatening to close the Brennero, uh, since, uh, and then they discovered that it was a major uh, uh, defeat for, for the Austrian economy. So this is the sea where no one is perfect. So hmm? you, you, you wouldn't uh, single out France particularly? You don't think France is behaving particularly badly? Because, of course, it's been said here in Italy that uh, hundreds of migrants arrived, for example, on the coast of Sicily and Calabria at the beginning of November. I mean, isn't Italy actually doing a lot more than France, comparatively? No, I think that the, um, France is doing more on Ukraine, for instance, now. Um, but I think that this, till when member states will decide one by one what to do with this global issue that is going to stay with us. It's a structural issue, it's not a, an emergency one day or another. Uh, till when the member states will not realize that oh, everybody on his own will solve the problem. So what does it mean that every member state is uh, treating the migration, in my opinion, my, much more on an electoral uh, uh, tool than a real uh, wish to solve the problem. That, by the way, doesn't have a miraculous sol solution. It's a step by step, and also because the world is not waiting for us. When you were European Commission, I believe that you did try to give the uh, European Commission more powers when it comes to migration policy, but that, of course, was resisted by member states. So has anything changed in this dynamic uh, over the last 20 years? I don't think so. I think that I was dealing with humanitarian affairs, and the humanitarian affairs step in when the politics has failed. But it's not the humanitarian that can solve a political uh, issue. We don't have neither the ambition nor, nor the tool. Um, but uh, um, in fact, I have the feeling that all member states think that this issue is an emergency, on, at least in Italy. And then uh, I think that the, uh, the declaration was the only way to avoid people sinking in the water is to, uh, to, to um, 
obliged them to stay where they are, in Libya, Niger, Mali, or whatever. This is a really an irrealistic, a stupid way of looking at the problem. But you don't have much hope for an EU-wide migration and asylum policy. You think that's completely unrealistic? Well, it's, what is needed, uh, uh, not only on migrants, but on many other dossiers, uh, in my opinion, is to change the Lisbon Treaty. Uh, if we don't overcome the uh, veto uh, uh, prerogative for any member state, be it COVID, be it energy, be it migrants, I don't think that there is any... We can dream of a miracle, European solution, but it's not on, on the competences of the European Commission. Emma Bonino, I want to ask you about a few national issues as well, or rather things that are affecting Italy and its relationship with the EU. Uh, of course, the, the government here is talking about revisiting the post-COVID stimulus package, a kind of partial renegotiation to take into account inflation issues. Uh, are you worried by this potential renegotiation? Do you think it could impact? It will never happen. Why not? I, it will never happen for the reason we just said. You need the unanimity of 27 countries who uh, accept the renegotiation. I think that what the Commissioner Gentiloni warned us and says over and over that something can be adjusted, but really yeah. something. Well, exactly. Gentiloni say that. By adjustment, are we talking about things that will impact more vulnerable communities in Italy? Is that a risk, do you think, or not? Well, uh, on this issue, the Italy dossier is not brilliant. On a structural fund, for instance, uh, most of the country, particularly in the south, are not using them. In the north, they behave much better. Let's say Emilia Romagna, I've been using the last package uh, of the structural fund by 85%. If you go down to Reggio Calabria, it's not even 30%. So, I mean, we are not uh, uh, in a position of uh, tough negotiation. Uh, so, you think the solution is to use existing funds better, existing European oh, yes. funding? Uh, and that may will give in time maybe more trust from partners who but that applies also to the uh, next generation you we will be at the same point in uh, uh, in, in few weeks hmm? in which we will be unable uh, to my opinion maybe a miracle will happen but uh, we will be unable to correctly uh, implement the reform that Europe asks us to do uh, in order to uh, provide us the, the uh, EU funds of the next generation. So there is a lot of things that we have to do home hmm, to be reliable partner in Europe. You are um, a veteran of the fight for women's rights in the 1970s and 1980s in Italy. You promoted the referendum that led to the legalization of abortion here in Italy. Uh, what trends do you see with this current coalition led by Giorgia Maloney? I think that they will never dare to change the law uh, transparently uh, in, in, uh, in Parliament. But they will be much more um, clever, simply um, non-implement the law. For instance, there are already regions where abortion is, legal abortion is impossible because of the mass conscious objection of the doctor. And there's no law that overrides the, the doctor's objection? No, the law uh, provides the, the um, conscious objection. But I retort that, and I have nothing against uh, personal uh, conscience objection. What I do think in the structure, particularly the hospital, in any case, they are obliged to follow the law. Hmm? Uh, and there are means to do that exactly as there are means to avoid that. So 
I think that the, we should be careful uh, um, and, and that we understand what are the way to empty the law, even if literally it remains in place. So you mean uh, in practical terms it would be made very difficult to, to have abortions in some parts of Italy, some yeah, areas or regions, yeah. is that what you're saying? There are some regions where practically everybody, every doctor, uh, is uh, a co uh, objection of conscience and is practicing it. So people will move to another region uh, to have a legal abortion or going abroad. It sounds a little bit like what happened in the United States um, a few a few uh, months ago. Uh, Emma Bonino, just um, on a final point, you've talked about a reactionary social agenda uh, by this government here. Uh, just briefly on the question of uh, LGBTQI uh, communities and so forth, things have gone a little bit quiet in the last few months. Is that something that is worrying, or has there been a change of, well, of hearts, I think, do you think? The, the, this government will not deal as a government on civil rights. It will let it the, to the parliament. That has a, in any case, this coalition has a strong majority, so it doesn't change much. They even invented the Ministry of uh, Family uh, and Equal Opportunities. So uh, I think that in this atmosphere for the next year, there is no room for civil liberties. So we will continue to fight uh, with hope. But uh, looking around, I don't see any possibility of improving the civil rights. Okay, we'll have to end on that uh, somewhat downbeat note. Thank you so much, uh, Emma Ciao. Bonino, uh, former European Commissioner, joining me here on Talking Europe. I'll be back in just a few minutes after the news bulletin with a panel of MEPs with my debate from the European Parliament. Do stay tuned.